Hello there, I am Jeanne-Marie Penel, founder and CEO of Voila Montessori, here to encourage and support you to be the best parent you can be. I am a Montessori parenting mentor and positive discipline parent educator, and I just love to share all of my knowledge and tools and strategies for you to really feel empowered, confident, and to enjoy this parenting journey that you are on with your child or children, or if you're a caregiver, taking care of other people's children and such. Um, I am a firm believer that children are capable of so much more than we give them credit for. If we have a bit more knowledge, if we set up the environment properly, they can show us wonderful things. And so today, I am here to answer a question that I receive a lot, and that is, why won't my child listen to me? So this is a big question, and this is why to me it's very important to have some knowledge about brain development. Because this question, I would answer it quite differently if I know the age of your child. Because children go through this immense evolution within the time of conception to um, 32 years of age. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no kidding aside, but it's true. The prefrontal cortex takes at least 30 years to fully develop. So when we have expectations of our young children to be able to listen and to be able to do what we ask them to do and such, it's going to take some time. And so it's better to learn about the, the brain and the tools that you can use to make that possible so that they do interact with you, so they do listen, so they do kind of, you know, can <clears throat> adapt and, and, and master the skills that they need to and do what is requested of them. So, um, why is, so why don't children listen to us? Well, first of all, because they're in the present moment and they are engaged with whatever they are doing. I mean, think of it when you are, you know, doing a project, whether it be, you know, fixing something that has, you know, broken, um, sewing something, cooking, reading, writing, drawing, whatever it is that you are engaged in. Do you like to be interrupted and asked to do something else? I mean, think about it. Do you? So why do we expect children to just put everything down and just come along and do whatever we want them to do. So that's, that's one aspect is really being aware of what we're asking our children and how we're asking them. So one thing that I really, you know, like to remind each of us, myself included, is that we need to connect first. Meaning that if you need your child to, you know, maybe put their toys away or come to the dinner table and such, try as much as possible not to just call it out, but actually walk over to them, get down to their level and say, hey, I see that you're really, um, you know, you're really having fun building whatever they're building or doing whatever they're doing. And it's time to come set the table uh, so that we can all have dinner. Or, and if you're hungry and ready for dinner, let's go set the table. It's time for us to eat. That is kind of connecting with them before you require, request something. Now, they might not even listen to you then, right? So there it is the idea of giving them choices. So again, going over to them, I see that you're really having fun building that and it's time to come set the table for us to all have dinner. They don't do it, all this. So then you just simply say, I know you heard me because I know we connected and 
it's time to come set the table. Do you need some help? Would you like me to help you or do you want to do it on your own? So again, a choice. Um, you know, it might be if it's a younger child, it might be, you know, would you like me to carry you or do you want to walk over on your own? Things like that. So here the point is, is that first we need to connect with our children and not just call out orders, you know, from wherever we are, the kitchen, the couch, whatever, and, and, and kind of uh, we tend to, unbeknownst to us, and, and please don't take this wrong, but sometimes we kind of bark orders out, uh, you know, un, un, unconsciously kind of. That's kind of how we might have been raised, and we kind of continue to do that. And so we just need to be really mindful that we will get much, much better success if we are able to connect with them first and really walk over to, you know, to them. Perfect example. This morning, uh, my husband, my sweet, wonderful husband, is the one that most often gets up to make breakfast for all of us. Uh, so we still have our youngest son at home. This is the last year. And we like to have breakfast, the three of us together. It's, it's important. It's our time of day to connect. Um, you know, he has after school activities. He actually works now. So dinner is not always a given at this age. So breakfast is really our time to be together. So we actually sit down and we have breakfast together. My husband gets up, prepares everything. This morning I was feeling a little lazy. And so I stayed in bed and, um, I much, much prefer that my son actually came into my room and said, Mom, breakfast is ready. As opposed to, you know, being called out from the other room of, you know, dinner's ready. So <clears throat> just those minor little things are so important. And I think that we need to remember that with our own children. So connect before you request anything. The other thing is to really minimize the amounts of words that you use. We tend to, again, unbeknownst to us, we tend to go into lecture mode and over explaining and such. And children, and, and actually most everybody, do not need long explanations. Like it's just what, you know, what is it that needs to get done? So be, you know, again, mindful of that, because when we go into long explanations, lecture mode, uh, pretty much, I would say 99%, we get tuned out, uh, because it's just, it's too much information. So again, keep it to a minimal, connect, keep it to a minimal, and then give choices. So those are really the three, for me, things to be thinking about for you to uh, really have your child be a better listener and get that cooperation from them. And then also just be super mindful that not everybody wants to do what you want to do, right? So again, give choices, pick your battles. There might be things that, you know, maybe it's not an emergency and you don't need to interrupt them from what they're doing. Because if you've been following me as well, you know how much I, you know, hone in on the importance of concentration with our young children. So be mindful also not to interrupt them when they are mastering a new skills, understanding a new concept, you know, involved in an activity. So I know that was a lot, but I hope that I've given you enough food for thought about why your child is not listening to you. You know, be aware. Are you connecting with them? Are you giving them choices? Are you, you know, being very direct and, and kind of minimizing the, the over explaining and the, and the lectures and, and all of that. Um, and then sometimes, you know, just being aware of their mood, you know, are they, are they hungry? Are they tired? Um, you know, maybe they had a bad day. All of these things come into mind because, you know, I know for myself, sometimes, you know, I'm very, happy to, you know, fulfill everybody's request. And other times I'm just kind of like, you know, tired and, and, and I don't want to. So children are the same thing. Like, why are we expecting this, this higher, you know, norm for them? So those are things to, to really keep in mind. 
And then the other thing is I did get another question uh, concerning this when I announced that I was going to talk about this topic. And it's from one of my subscribers who says, um, my question is, why doesn't my six year old respond to what I say several times in a row until my voice goes up? Do you think it might be related to ADHD, to high sensitivity, to being a strong, determined character? Maybe. I don't know. I would have to observe and, and, and see your child. But what I would say is if they are strong and determined character, that is great to have. You know, uh, oftentimes I hear people say, oh, I have a strong willed child as if that, that was something bad. It's actually wonderful. You don't want a pushover. You want somebody who's going to know what they want in life and, and have a, a will and a determination and stuff. So see that as a positive trait and work with what I said earlier. Are you connecting? Are you going over to them or are you just barking orders from another room? If you go and you connect with them, you look at them in their eyes and you let them know in minimal words, what it is you need from them, I bet you, you will get a lot more um, cooperation. And a six-year-old, you know, we can totally uh, rationalize with them. So we can go over to them and say, did you hear me? Did you see, did you hear what I, I asked? What did I ask? And just make sure that you have that interaction, that you have that connection. Because we don't know, you know, when we're calling orders for out from another room, we don't see what they're doing. They may be totally engrossed in something. Um, so it's important to be able to connect. And this, you know, this isn't only for children. This is for everybody. Like, make contact before you uh, expect a, a return and a response. So... I would say trial of these things. I don't like labeling children into all the, you know, different disorders that we now have and the list, you know, are so immense. To me, we're all very different. We're all individuals and we all need love and connection. Um, as Jane Nelson from Positive Discipline, you know, tells us we all need uh, significance and belonging. And, uh, and that's really important. So, Let's give that to our children and to those, um, all the relationships that we have and model that for our children. And, uh, and I, I promise you that they will, uh, listen a lot more if we connect with them before. So I hope this was, uh, useful and that I answered your question of why won't my child listen to me. Again, uh, I am Jeanne Marie Penel and I am here to support and encourage you to be the best parent you can be. And just on a side note, this Sunday, I will be uh, live with my friend Simone Davy from the Montessori Notebook in Amsterdam. We will be doing the Montessori show, which is a show that we have done uh, pretty consistently these past two years. It was monthly. Now we kind of have gone to quarter. Simone is actually on a big book tour right now. She has um, published the Montessori Toddler. Amazing book. Highly recommend it. Right now there's a pre-order. You get all of these bonuses. So check that out on the Montessori uh, Notebook.com website. Uh, but that was just to say I will be back uh, Sunday, Sunday noon uh, Pacific time for the Montessori show where we will talk about why timeouts don't work. So I think that's another great topic and uh, we will be live on Zoom. So uh, check out on my Facebook page the event. You click on the Zoom, you come on live, you ask us questions. It's a great interactive show. And then if you're not able to be live, then I will post it to YouTube and you can just look up on YouTube, The Montessori Show. So that's it for me uh, for my weekly Q&A. And I will be back next week on Wednesday. Hopefully Facebook uh, and all of that will be working because it was quite difficult today. But um, beautiful day to all of you. Be the best parent you can be. And I will talk to you later. Bye bye for now.